Hello, in this video we're going to look at the Form Builder tool. If your subscription includes Form Builder access, you can create custom online forms or edit the current online form supplied by MSW. This is great if you need to modify a question on an existing form or create a new form from scratch to reduce footfall into the practice. We'll split this video into two parts. The first part will focus on how to edit an existing form and publish that to your website. And the second part will look at creating a new form from scratch and publishing that to your website. To get started, I'd recommend having two tabs open, one with your website and one with FPMS. All of the relevant login detail information about accessing each area is in your website. Welcome email. So once over in FPMS, you want to select the fourth icon down on the left and select Form Builder. The Form Builder is split into two sections. At the top, you have Standard Forms. These are forms supplied by MSW. And if you scroll to the bottom, you'll have a My Forms section. If you haven't created any forms before, this section might show blank, but any forms that you do create will show under the My Forms heading. In this example, I want to take an existing form from the website and make a few changes. In your case, you might want to edit the new patient questionnaire form or the contact us form or whatever form it is. What you need to do is locate the form from beneath the standard forms heading and select the I icon to the right hand side. So I'm going to edit the ask me review form in this example. Once open, select the copy button on the right hand side and the page will refresh. Then if you scroll to the bottom, you'll see under the My Forms heading, you have a copy of the form that you've just copied. So I've, I've now got a copy of Asthma Review Form. So we need to now go into this form and make our changes. So on the right hand side, if we select the pencil icon, it will edit the form. And you see the form now refreshes so we can go through and start making our changes. It's important that you edit the title of the form. So you want, what we want to do is remove the copy off section here. So if I click in there and just remove that, we'll now just be left with asthma review form. And you've also got a description section here as well. So you can go through and add a description so patients will be able to see that at the top of the form. But it's entirely up to you if you feel that a description is suitable or not. And with any description as well, you can actually format the text. But what I would only do is format the text if you feel that it's necessary as your website has been made accessible. So you don't want to start using lots of different headings as it might make it harder for users to read. But as an example, I might want to highlight this text here. So it says, please answer the questions. And I'm just going to make this bold. So the way that the form builder works is you create sections and then add questions within a section. So looking at this section here highlighted in blue, it is called your details. And there are four questions within that section. So we've got name, date of birth, phone number and email address. Within a section, you've got four options here. So you can edit the section. So that allows you to edit the, the title and the description of that section. You can also reorder the questions within a section. You can remove the section and you can add a question within that section. So let's go in here and add another question. So if I select the icon here, the plus icon, and then scroll down, you'll see here we've now got a new question that's been added. So for the question text, I'd like someone to type in their address. So I'm going to put in address here. And the next section, is it required? So if you feel like this is an important question and you'd like the patient to fill it out, select this option here. Depending on what question you might have, you have seven options here in the question type. So we've got simple text. So this is if you want the patient to enter a short amount of text. We've got paragraph text. So when you anticipate the patient might want to enter a large amount of text. We've got date. So if they might want to put in their date of birth or a specific date. Choose one option. So you might have something where you might say select a day of the week for the patient and they would enter select the option. You've got choose many options, drop down list and then yes or no. So for this example, I'm just going to choose simple text and press change here. So you now see that address has been added 
and it's now the fifth question in this section here. So what I'd like to do now is make address the second question in this section. To do this, if we go to the edit section here and click on reorder questions, in the pop-up, you can click and hold with your mouse, drag the question into the correct order, let go and then just press save changes. And once that refreshes, you'll see now that address is the second question. If you want to reorder sections, you can do this by scrolling up to the top and going to where it says reorder sections. And the same concept applies. You would click, hold with your mouse, drag it into position and then just press save changes. So if you're happy with your form and you made all the changes that you want to do with the form, what you want to do is press publish on the right hand side. And if everything is correct, you'll then see a confirmation here. So it'll say this template has been published. The next step is then to enable this custom form on your website. So if we go over to the website, the easiest way to do this is to open the menu up on the left hand side and go to where it says manage pages. What you see now is a list of all the pages that are on your website. As a tip, what I would do is, is where it says here, filter by page type, I would select form, and this will just filter all of the online forms that you've currently got. So what you want to do is find the form that you want to replace. So I want to re replace the old Ask Me Review form with the new one that I've created. So what I do is just click the icon here, and then the form loads up here. So you can see that this is the old form that is supplied by MSW as it doesn't have the address section and it also doesn't have the bold text here. So what we do is we hover over with our mouse and then we select the edit button at the top. And then from the left, select the second drop down and scroll to the very bottom here. And you see where it says my forms and select the form that you've just created. So I've created a new asthma review form and then just press save. So the page will then refresh and you see that this is the new form as it has the new address question and it also has the new bold text there as well. So this is how you would edit any of the standard forms and publish them on your website. We supply lots of different forms to you. However, if you want to create a new form entirely from scratch that's not on your website, we'll look at now how you can create a new form from scratch. So if we go back over to FPMS, select the four or five icon down and then press form builder. In the top right hand corner here, we want to select where it says create new form. So the first thing we want to do is actually give the form a title. So what I'm going to do is create a very basic blood test results form. So I'm going to type in blood test results. And I'm not going to enter a description, but if we scroll down here, we just want to select the form type. So is it an admin or a clinical form? I'm just going to select clinical and then press save. So now it's time to create a new section. So on the right hand side here, you've got add section. So I click on that and then I can scroll down here. So then we've got the title. So what do we want the first title to be called? So I'm going to call it your results and then press save section. So what I want to do now is create a few questions within this section. So the first question will be for the name. So I'm going to click on here where it says add question and type name in here. I'm going to make it a required field and it's just going to be simple text. So I press save changes. I'm going to add another question and I'm going to ask for the date of birth. I'm also going to make this required. And I'm going to put the question type as a date. And if we select it as a date, what happens for the users, a calendar opens up from there. And so it makes it easy for them to select the date. Press save changes. And then I'm going to add one more question. So add question. And I'm going to type in what are your results? This is also going to be required. And what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to choose a choose one option here. So what I can do is I can go through and add multiple options. So I'm going to 
have an option which says one, I'm going to have an option which just says two, one which says three, and then one, one which says four or more. So if we press save changes there, so we've now got one section called your results and we've got three questions within it. So one for name, one for date of birth and one for what are your results. And then the patient can go through and select if it's one, two, three or four or more. So let's just say we've created the form and we've gone through and created all the sections and added all the questions and we're happy with the form. If we scroll to the top and then like before, if we press publish, we'll then get the confirmation here. So this template has been published. So if we navigate back to your website, as this is an entirely new form, we need to create a new page and then display this form on that page. And it only takes a few moments to do that. So to do this, again, if we go to manage pages, but this time if we select new page at the top here, and we need to enter a name for the page. So what I would suggest is using the same title as what you've used for the form. So I'm going to put blood test results, and then we need to select the type of page. And as it's a form, we want to select forms. So select forms and then press save. So now you'll see at the top here that there's been a new page created called blood test results and we've got a blank page here. So if we hover over with our mouse and click where it says edit, on the left hand side here we can then select this second drop down, scroll to the very bottom and then click the form that we want to display. So this is the new form that we've just created. So we want the blood test results form to show. So I'll select that from the drop down press save and then the page refreshes there. So this is our new form. So we've got blood test results, we've got the your results section, we've got name, we've got date of birth and then what are your results and then submit at the bottom there. So now that the form has been published on the website, you might want to decide where you want to place it. So for instance, you might want to create a new widget which says fill out our new blood test results form. Or you might have it on a service page here where you might want to create a new widget on here which said blood test results form. But for, for this example, I'm just going to create a new image widget on the home page. So if you select a relevant row where you'd like to add it, click on the row and then press add widget. And then on the left here, press image here. So once the image widget loads, if we hover over it and then select the edit icon, we want to give the widget a title. So I'm going to put in here, blood test results, blood test results. And then I'm going to put some text in here. So fill out our new blood test results form here. And then we've got a select image option here. So if we want to add an image, we can. So I'm going to add an image and then I'm going to select the online library because I'd like to search for an image and I'm going to put in here blood and then it will bring up some relevant images. Well, I'm just going to select this image here and then just put a, uh, oh, a description of the image. So blood test results, press on select. So we've got the title, we've got the description, we've got an image, and now we need to link the widget. So essentially when the patient hovers over this widget, we want to direct that patient to the new form. So if we click where it says add a link to this widget, then on the left hand side here, we've got a few options. So where do we want the link to be? Is it to a page? Is it to a new URL? Is it to a survey or a file? And for this example, it's a page. So what we've got here is a list of all the pages on the website. And I know my, that my page is called blood test results. So if I click on that and then press save, what we want to do is then make the widget visible. So it just means that it's visible for patients and then press save. So then we refresh the page here. You'll see that we've now got a new widget here called blood test results. And it says, fill out our new blood test results form here. So when we click on it, it then takes the patient through then to the form.